Well, hello, Jennifer. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on. I'm a big fan of this show, so it's fun to be here. Yay. I, it's always a pleasure to be able to interview someone that has said, oh, I've listened to your podcast and, you know, excited to be on. So I'm a fan of your channel. You have a beautiful channel. Your videos okay. are such a escape from the world and... I can't wait to just dive into your content creation process. Uh, so you've been on YouTube for 11 years, am I right? Yes. All mm -hmm. right. Why don't you take us through a quick cliff notes of that journey and how you ended up where you're at today doing the type of content you're doing? Sure. So yes, I feel like I've been on YouTube for so long because I have, and <laughs> I feel like it's so funny because when I watch your um, videos, everyone's like, oh, I've been on for two years and they have like a million subscribers or something. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I've been here forever. But um, <laughs> I started my channel in 2011 um, because, not because I had plans to become a YouTube star or I didn't even know if it, that it would, could be a profession but because I am an author and I wrote my first book and I wanted to market it. So I thought, I recognized back then already that YouTube was a great marketing tool because I had a blog, a written blog, and that was a good marketing tool. And I thought, well, if you add the visual component, it could only be better. And I already enjoyed watching YouTube at that point. So I started my channel um, to market my first book. And um, I really had that mentality for a long time, like many years where I'm like thinking, I only have my channel to market my books. Like I'm an author, I'm not a YouTuber. That's like the mentality that I had. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really put much into growing my channel. I didn't even look at analytics for like the first six years. I'm not oh, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like yeah. I didn't even know what subscribers were or that I had. And it's funny because I had a pretty big blog following. And when I started a YouTube channel, like I got a lot of subscribers right away. I think like I couldn't even tell you, but I just, it was just a thing like, you know what I mean? Like I just had subscribers. I didn't know that subscribers were important um, or like the number was. And so I, I had like 30,000 subscribers for like, I feel like it was like six years. Okay. <laughs> like it never went up. Yeah. It just never, but I didn't know if that was good or I didn't think about it. And then, um, I started to notice subscribers and things like that later, but that's why I started my channel initially was because I wanted to market my books. And then of okay. course it evolved into more later on. Yeah, really cool. So then how did it evolve? So, you know, you started mm -hmm. it to market your books. Um, you said you had 30,000 subscribers for like a, a very, very long time. Obviously you're far beyond that today and looking yeah. at your channel, it doesn't look like an afterthought. There does look like there's no. a lot of energy and work put into it. So how did that transition from just a marketing tool for your book to now being a serious endeavor for you? Well, it became, I mean, it's a lot of work. YouTube has always been a lot of work and I've always been consistent with it, even when it was an afterthought or it was not that important to me. Um, I never took like long breaks. I've consistently posted like every week for the past 11 years. Oh, wow. And okay. some, yeah, and something really hit me where I thought I, I became, I got to a point where I wasn't really making money on YouTube for like, of course, for those mm -hmm. years when I wasn't paying attention to it. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm either going to need to turn this into something profitable or I need to get rid of it because it was just so time consuming and becoming more and more so. So um, I actually honestly couldn't even tell you the year, but it was probably around 2017 or so, I think, where I, you know, I consciously was like, okay, I need to start earning money at YouTube or I need to just quit because... I'm not doing this for free anymore, basically. So that's when I started paying attention to analytics finally and to bettering my channel. Mm. And so your initial goal with coming onto YouTube was to, was it more like to promote your books in a way? Mm -hmm. so yes. Did that, did it accomplish that? Did you feel that you did get some more eyes on your books and get more book sales? Yeah, definitely. Um, my books, um, well, my books have been really successful. And, you know, they've been New York Times bestsellers. And um, 
my first book, it's an interesting story because I self-published it because I couldn't get a publisher. That's why I started my YouTube channel, which mm. really was such a blessing in disguise. I might mm. not have started my YouTube channel if I had gotten a publisher right away. Um, yeah, so I um, marketed it and then it did so well that um, the New York Times did a review on it. It was actually the first self-published book they ever reviewed. Mm. And then um, a few months later, we sold it to Simon & Schuster. So uh, that book just it's called lessons from madame chic and it sold over a million copies like and i really credit a lot of that to my youtube channel because every video i did at the end of it i said i still do this um interested in more check out my books and i show my books and every day people say oh i just discovered your books you know and they're old like my my first book is over 10 years old people mm -hmm. are still buying it because they just discovered my channel mm -hmm. and that so I really do credit a lot of my success as an author to YouTube because of the continual uh, marketing. Wow, that's so cool. So what type of content were you doing back in the day where you were, you know, trying to, because you're not going to go up there and just be like, oh, buy my book, buy my book. Right. So what, what kind of content were you mm -hmm. doing there at the beginning? Well, it's funny because my content ideas have never changed. I've maintained the same things this whole time. It's just now I'm packaging them more beautifully and thinking more thoughtfully about them. But I always just discuss the topics that I write about in my books. So mm. I write about, you know, living well, beautiful living, um, the 10 item wardrobe, a big, it's like a big, I don't have a niche. I have like this big lifestyle genre. And so um, I would just simply uh, in the beginning, just take a concept from one of my books and discuss it in a video. Like I never use B roll. <laughs> I did my own editing. There was no graphic, like no bells and whistles at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just talk about a concept from my books. And I feel like back then that was like enough to build subscribers. Now, like people expect a full blown movie production, you know, but back then they didn't. And, and that worked for me. Um, so my content, I still talk about the same things I've been talking about mm -hmm. for 11 years, funny enough. But um, so I haven't changed that at all. And so when you had that moment where like, this is way too much work, I need yeah. to take YouTube seriously. It sounded like you said you started to look at the analytics, but then what else did you do to kind of, you know, take YouTube more seriously? Right. Well, I looked at all the different ways that you could earn money on YouTube mm -hmm. and um, because I didn't pay attention to that before either. Okay. And, you know, in the beginning, um, when I first started YouTube, I watched a video by, I think her name is Candy. She's like a really famous makeup artist. Candy um, Johnson. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing Candy do a video. This was like 11 years ago where she was talking about how she didn't make any money on YouTube and it was like hardly pennies on. And so I saw that video and in my head, I just thought, oh, you can't make money on YouTube. Like I just, mm. <laughs> unfortunately that misinformation and I'm not saying she was lying I'm just saying yeah because that, that was also 11 years ago too or, yeah you know, right and things, things have changed have but changed. I kept that mentality where I mm -hmm. thought oh you just can't make money so I didn't even bother looking into it but finally when I you know I thought I need to get paid for all this work I'm doing and so I looked into it so in addition to improving my videos I looked into all the different income streams that you could have through YouTube which are many you know, affiliate links, sponsorships, and um, now channel memberships, merch, like <laughs> all of it. So I did that. And um, those were the ways, really. Yeah. And so what, how did you change then your content itself? I tried to improve the quality. So um, I used to be an actress, like I majored in theater. And I remember one of my favorite acting teachers said, the cream will always rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And I've always kept that. And I always thought, you know, I need to, I can't just, yes, I do expect to get paid for what I do, but I need to provide the best quality content. I want people to watch my videos and like feel things and be excited about them and actually, um, you know, I want to earn money from this, but I want to deliver a really top product. So I started looking into, you know, the cinematography of my videos, the music. Um, I work with an editor now, you know, just like they're more professional. And I, I really believe in delivering something that is, I don't want to waste people's time. I want them to click on the video and have an amazing experience. Yeah. And so you had 
you know, roughly 30,000 subscribers for a while. You started taking it more seriously. You made some changes. And then was it just a slow growth from there? Because now you're at 200 something thousand subscribers. Mm -hmm. So was it yeah. growth or was there a moment or a specific video that kind of took things off for you? It was a slow growth. Like I always say, I am the tortoise and the tortoise and the hare. Like mm -hmm. it's just slowly just going, you know, there was yeah. a point. I mean, basically it's so amazing when you start to pay attention to your channel, it's like a plant. If you just have a plant, you never, you barely water it. You barely think about it, you know, but if you start to fertilize the plant, water the plant, put it in the ideal place, it's going to thrive. It's like the same with my channel. When I started paying attention to it, then I really saw growth. Mm -hmm. Um, and I definitely had some videos that helped me like gain a, a bumper of subscribers, but in general, it's, um, been slow and steady and we're at about 220,000 right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you said you upload once, once a week or how often do you upload? So I upload three times oh, a week. I do two. Okay. Well, I do two on the main channel and I do one, um, private video for my channel members, um, every Friday. Oh, wow. So it's a lot of content. Yeah. And I used to do one video a week, like for a long time, but now I do three I and mean, I've been doing that for years. Mm -hmm. So it is a lot though. And then did you up that video amount when you kind of change your mindset around YouTube? Is that when that switch happened? I think I did. Yes. And I, I can't tell you how long I've been doing it, but it, it's been years. I've been doing two. I do on Mondays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. I haven't published my video for today. Oh. I need to do that after this, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then you have a chant like a, was it through YouTube or Patreon? Through YouTube channel memberships. Okay. And then yeah. how long have you had that? I started that about two years ago, two and a half years ago, or as soon as it became available, I started it. Wow. So and then so how yeah. is, how is that working out for you? Because I know some people mm -hmm. I've talked to they've done the memberships, but it just hasn't totally panned out. Um, mm -hmm. How is it? You know, how's the membership thing going for you? It's going really well. I love it. We okay. call it the Chic Society, and I do um, a vodcast every Friday. I knew I had to do something easy. Like there's no B-roll. They're not fancy. I edit them myself, but it's just me talking for 20 minutes. And oftentimes I'll talk about like current events that I don't talk about my main on my main channel. Like, mm. like when the queen passed away, we mm. talked about that. And, you know, um, just things that are happening right now, or like a fashion trend or something like that. It's really fun. And then I do one um, zoom call a month. So we all get to see each other. And I put that on there. And it's really fun. I love those videos. We have a pen pal program. Like it's, I love it. Yeah. It's been a great addition to the channel. Yeah, that's really cool. How many members? Well, not how many members, but like how what, what do you charge people for that? I have three different tiers mm -hmm. and the lowest tier. I wanted to make it affordable. It's only one dollar and ninety nine cents a month. Oh, okay. So I think that's why, um, you know, I'm not like trying to get tons of money from it. I'm more like wanting the community to be there, you know, so and I want it to be just at no thought, no brainer. You like my channel. Oh yeah. I'll do $1 and 99 cents a month. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's also upper tiers. So there's a $7 and 99 cents right now and a $25, um, tier. And those um, people get their names mentioned in one video a month. Mm -hmm. That's like the perks. Oh, but for the $1.99, so, they get that extra video every week and mm -hmm. zoom. Yep. And the oh. pen pal program, they get everything except they just don't have their names mentioned in the video. Oh, well, what's the pen pal oh. program? We, um, I have set it up like through this site where they can exchange addresses. And so like every two months I match them with pen pals and, and so they're all writing like letters to each other. It's very nice. Oh, wow. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you have a lot of members in there? We're doing pretty well. Yeah, we do. We have, um, we have a lot and I plan to just keep growing it, yeah. you know, um, yeah. because it's the same amount of work. So I'd love to have even more yeah, members. Exactly. And Especially with only a dollar ninety nine. Right. Yeah. So. So then you've got that. It sounds like that third video that goes on your membership is not as labor intensive as no. the YouTube videos on the YouTube channel. Right. 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 So then how, and it sounds like you've got a team or at least an editor helping you out with the other videos, but how, what does your schedule look like in creating mm -hmm. all of this content? 
So um, I've become very structured with this now, whereas I wasn't before, and it's definitely helped me. But basically, like Monday through Thursday, I'm working on content ideas, um, or writing out blogs or um, mapping out writing out scripts and, or I'll do B roll where it just is easy. Like if I cook something for dinner, I might film myself doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my talking portions, like it, when I do a sit down video where I'm talking to people, you know, I want to look good for that. So yeah, I yeah. <laughs> do that on Friday. I'll do one on Friday. I'll do one on Saturday. So Friday and Saturday are my filming days for the videos where I like have to look glam. Mm. And then, you know, I'll film bits and pieces throughout the week, but I designate those days um, to do that. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. So you said Mondays and Tuesdays, Fridays and Saturdays? Filming is really Fridays and Saturdays mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. but um, Monday and then the rest of the days are all the other things. Like, you know, I don't, I'm not even blogging right now because my blog is down. I'm having it moved mm-hmm. and um, blogging takes forever. Just yeah. the pictures and the right. I mean, it's, it's hours. So mm-hmm. um, Monday through Thursday, I'm really just working on all the other stuff to do with um, the content creation. So you're technically working six days a week. I pretty much work seven days a week because I also work on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. take any days off. I know. It's, it's tough. Yeah. Like how, how many hours would you say? Because this is even with an editor, right? Right. So how many yeah. hours would you say you're putting into each video? Oh, gosh. Not your Patreon one. Or not right, right. Not right. your membership. Channel ones. membership. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. I mean, I couldn't even tell you because so many of my videos are piece, like the homemaking videos mm-hmm. will be different scenes that I film throughout the week. And then the writing of the script. I mean, it's, it's hours, like probably, I don't know, 12. I, I'm not, I couldn't even tell you. I have no idea. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Because you're, you know, like I've seen your videos and it's like, you have somewhere, it's almost like day in the life or like kind of routine mm-hmm. type videos. But yeah, you're taking, you know, you cook something, so you've got that footage. But it, you're mm-hmm. not, and I can't imagine you're sitting there like filming everything back to back, back to back. So you're just kind of no. constantly filming different things and then yeah. putting them together. And the unfortunate thing about that is that it kind of messes with me where I can't relax. Like if I'm just cooking something for my family and it's like going to be good, mm-hmm. I think I, I, I can't waste this. I have to film it, you know, because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. because you know, when I'm tired and I don't feel like cooking, I'll have that footage and that happens to me a lot yeah. or, um, with anything, like if I'm making, so a, it seeps into my real life a lot in a way that I don't necessarily like where I, I literally can't do anything without thinking, should I be filming this particular thing for my channel? Like as insurance for a later video, you yeah. know? So. And you have four kids, right? Yes. And so you got four kids and how old are they? They are 12, 10, 6, and 4. Oh, so they're, 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 they're little. They're, they're young, yeah. yeah. So how are you able to do this with, and you homeschool as well? Or no? We do, yes. You do. So we're in a hybrid program where okay. they go to campus twice a week. And then on the days okay. when they're home, I have a homeschool tutor. So okay. I don't do the teaching anymore. Okay. I'm like, that is, yeah. I'm like, how are you doing <laughs> It's <that?"> a lot. <laughs> I did still, it for a long time yeah. where I was doing everything. Yeah, but I don't do it anymore. So. But even still with four kids and yeah. the kids being home, that must make it difficult to also work and film. Even if you've got a tutor, you know, mm-hmm. with them. Um, but I mean, even the, the four-year-old's probably little, I don't know if the four-year-old yeah. has been doing the, the schoolwork or whatever, but like, how, yeah. are you able, how are you able to manage it with, as a mother of four, basically? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. And things have changed a lot, you know, and, and there are seasons where I have help, seasons where I didn't have help, you know. Um, you have to have help, I, I mean... Yes, I've all, yeah, yeah, so I've, but I did the school myself for a few years, like in the beginning, <clears throat> and it, I burnt out in 2020, basically, <laughs> I but, think, uh, <laughs> I think you and the rest of the world, <laughs> exactly, and I think everyone's home. like, I'm done, <laughs> yeah, everyone had kids home from school, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was intense, so mm-hmm. I did burn out then, and thankfully, I set myself up for that, and I saw it coming, plus, I really, you know, I'm working on a new book right now and I, I really value my channel. And so I'm putting more into that and I realize how important that is. I don't want there 
education to suffer at all. So yeah, so they're in a great hybrid program where they have they go to campus twice a week, they have wonderful teachers, and then the rest is finished at home with the tutor. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but now we have a lot of help now in particular, our family has had kind of a rough not kind of a very rough summer where mm. my husband lost his stepfather and um, my dad had an accident. So oh. I'm visiting him at the hospital four times a week. Like it's added so much um, to our plate. So we have the help of a nanny and a tutor and um, we just have help. So that's yeah. how I do it. And yeah. I couldn't do it without them at this point, you know? Oh, yeah. So no, it's, yeah. it's, it's impossible because for the amount of work that YouTube is, and like that much content it's yeah yeah it's it's hard um mm -hmm. so and then so i know that you kind of consciously don't like don't have your kids as part of the the videos and so i'm curious like how do you designate time for yourself to do it say even on the weekends and like is it just that, that they're just I guess I'm trying to figure out what I'm asking. Like, <laughs> like, what do I do with my kids when I'm filming, basically? Yeah, kind of. Like. <laughs> yeah. So um, we d I have my filming hours like Friday and then um, Saturday is like, I, I usually take the first half of Saturday mm -hmm. to film. So mm -hmm. they're not here. They're mm -hmm. usually, you know, with family members or, with you know, they're out basically. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to get too much into our personal schedule, yeah. but yeah. I make yeah. sure, and they know, you know, mommy has to work. This is mommy's time for filming and yeah. to everybody totally gets it. Saturday afternoons, evenings, family time, Sunday, family time, mm -hmm. you know, except for probably a few hours where I work, but yeah, yeah. you know, it's just, you have to just lay down those. And it, I think it's nice that it's not constantly like they never know when I'm going to be, they know it's like Fridays and Saturdays is when I'm working, like, yeah. like really working, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so they just totally accept that. And it's fine. Like, I remember when I was a kid, my dad, he, he was a college professor and I just knew like, like there were certain days where I couldn't go up there and cause he's writing his lectures. And I just mm -hmm. accepted that as a yeah. child. And and I think it's good for them to know that you do other things too. You yeah, know? to show that uh, type of yeah. almost role, role model in a way of you being mm -hmm. an uh, entrepreneur. And I mean, I, I deal with the same thing. Right. Um, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, you know, mommy's working and all right. that. So setting setting those expectations up, but then also, okay, now mommy's not working. So now's the time, you know. Yes. So, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's that's really admir admirable. I mean, for I have two young yeah. kids, four and a five and six multiple like four kids it's like okay like and you're yeah. still you know you're still out there doing your thing so it's it's awesome mm. that's really inspiring to i'm sure a ton of moms and stuff even though it's yeah. not something you talk a lot about on your channel but right. i'm sure it's a huge part of your life yes you know, of course that. definitely yeah. yeah yeah okay so we're now going to the second part of the interview where i ask okay. everybody the same questions that i asked you know, okay. the, the, anybody that comes on the show. So the first question is, what is your number one struggle with YouTube? I, I think it's changed over the years. Um, but right now, my number one struggle is probably finding the time to fit everything in that I need to do. Just mm. there's so much I could literally work forever. And my husband says that all the time. He's just like, when are you you need to because the other night he was like, he wanted to watch a movie, but I was working and I'm like, well, just tell me because I will literally work until forever. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not yeah. interrupted, you know? Yeah. So um, that's probably it right now. And I think that's something a lot of people struggle with that are on YouTube. And I think that goes hand in hand with being in a field or a career, you could say, that you genuinely love and enjoy, right? It's very difficult to right. kind of keep working and working right. if you aren't really passionate about it and really. If you hate it. it. <laughs> Exactly. Because <laughs> right. for me, it's the same thing. Like I could work. Yeah, I could work nonstop. You know, I, mean, yeah. I love YouTube. I love working with channels and creators and stuff. And mm -hmm. so um, I think loving what you do. And I think obviously, I think a lot of YouTubers do. Otherwise, they yeah. wouldn't be doing it. Uh, right. Plays a big part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. What if you were to start over right now with your YouTube channel? What if anything mm -hmm. would you do differently? Oh, I would 100% just immediately take it seriously as a career and its own thing as an art. Mm -hmm. And I would pay attention to analytics. I would have, I mean, I spent six years like not knowing what I had even. Mm. Um, and 
you know, I always see people who started around when I did, they all have like over a million subscribers. (laughs) And like, I probably could have been there if I actually paid attention to things, you know, already. So I would, I would have taken it seriously. Like, I feel like for a while, I I felt like it was an embarrassing thing. I never, I still don't tell anybody I do YouTube, but like, not that I'm, I'm not embarrassed of it now. But Mm -hmm. back then, you know, Mm -hmm. it was kind of like, a little embarrassing, you know. So, well, because you're, you're I just, an author, like you said, you know, yeah. all these people that started YouTube and they did. Now they have a million subscribers. Yeah, but but you're an author. That was who you were first, right? And and it always will be who mm-hmm. I was first in my first career and my my true love. But now I I just recognize what an amazing thing YouTube is, and I'm really proud of the platform, the channel, and the opportunities that you get from it. So I would have definitely taken it seriously from the get-go. <laughs> yeah. What do you, I, I feel the same way. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. What, what do you feel is so amazing about YouTube? Like, why, why, why are you so passionate mm. about it? It's, well, you know, this is probably because I started off uh, in my early 20s as an actress. Um, <clears throat> and I did a lot of theater and I did commercials and things like that. But as an actress, I would go into, you know, into Hollywood, I'd go into Studio City and do all these auditions, like for shows, and there'd be like 12 people there watching me audition. And it's so nerve wracking. And then to just constantly them just be like, no, no, you know, rejection, just rejection for years. And finally, YouTube is like, I don't need those people. It's amazing, you know, entry. Yes. And it's given a voice to so many people that have been rejected by, you know, commercial enterprises and you know i was never good enough for like you know C- nbc cbs or whatever but i don't need them yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. why i love youtube it's like the wild west like whatever it's yours you know um you could create whatever you want and i love that yeah i mean i relate so much to that because i did that whole thing too i yeah. was in la for a long time we actually just moved on to san diego but um, oh, nice. I was in LA for many, many, many years. Um, had the agent, did all the auditions, mm-hmm. drove all over LA, yep. did a lot of yeah. red carpet work. And, and that, that's, that's one of the big reasons why I love YouTube so much too, because it's mm-hmm. like, wow, you have a platform. You don't need yeah. any of these other people. You can really tap into what makes you special and you know yeah. that better than anybody and right. bring it to the world and see and be able to make that, that impact. So I totally relate. I relate to that a lot. I love yeah. That. I love that. Yeah. So what is your favorite video that you've uploaded onto your channel? Um, that's a, that's a hard question. I feel like, um, you know, I did a video on Monday that I absolutely love. Like it's, it's just my most recent one. It was, it's a series that I started called three connoisseur secrets. And it's on nature therapy, manicures, and tea. And it's just like, I love this video so much. So I can't really tell you one video, but like those like more artistic videos that I do, I love. And then um, I love my series where um, it's now called Seek Out the Arts, but it used to be called The Chic Assignment, where we dive into like the arts, you know, Mm -hmm. classical music, paintings, because I learn so much from those videos and I just love them. So those are probably my favorite. Very cool. Have you ever wanted to give up on YouTube? What happened there and how did you get back on track? Yeah, that point where I was burnt out and not making any money on it. You know, it was making like $300 a month. (laughs) (laughs) But putting in like hours each day and I was like, I was, it was either I was going to give up or I was going to make money at it. So yeah, definitely more tough when you have kids and stuff too like yes right now. because it was taking time away from them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I know you're like it's, yeah. gotta, it's gotta count um yeah. what is your number one tip for preserving your mental health as a content creator mm-hmm. that's good um it's hard because you know I'm at the point now where I don't like mean comments and stuff like I don't care but I did care for many years mm-hmm. you know Um, but there's also a lot of sinister, darker things, you know, that's like one of the reasons why I don't like share my kids too much. So I don't blame you. I I wouldn't either. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had some scary incidents, um, in the past with that. So I just, I really put up a shield and it's like literally a shield because sometimes I'd read not a mean comment. I don't care about those, but like a scary kind of comment. And it would, I'd immediately feel something like physical in my body, you know, Mm -hmm. and those are the things that bothered me the most. So I think just, um, putting up a shield, protecting myself, like I have 
a team of people who work for me, like my website team who screens emails to me and communications and just that nothing hits me that is going to hurt me and you know other people deal with that for me so uh, you have to protect it like no other as a creator yeah you do you have to protect your mind and you know it's very strange but there are people out there I don't know if they're I don't know what's going on with them but they're probably mentally ill but um because they they're channeling their anger out on hurting you you know which is like their problem obviously but um you can't, there's people that want you to quit. Like they don't want to see you succeed. And like when that happens, I'm just like, oh, well now I'm really going to succeed, you know? Yeah. So um, that's kind of where I go, thankfully. Yeah. But. <laughs> I think uh, YouTubers are really easy targets. Right. Because we're accessible. You can mm-hmm. reach us, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You can't reach yeah. uh, JLo. Or Mo- exactly. Or Movie whatever. stars, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, I also think people look at it and they I hate to say like oh they're jealous because but it's more like they see people kind of going after what they want and succeeding yeah and I think a lot of people feel um like a sense of maybe maybe jealousy because they didn't do it themselves or maybe they had these ideas and they just never did it and then so it's like if that YouTuber yeah. isn't like perfect or they're annoying for some reason or they annoy them, it's like, nah, 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 nah. You know, I just think that, I just think YouTubers mm-hmm. are probably some of the easiest targets out there for, yeah. for hate, which is I unfortunate, know. but it's, it's the price, yeah. it's the price you pay for being on YouTube. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Um, is there any video that you were like really pumped about, super excited about that you uploaded and it flopped? <laughs> I have had so many of those. <laughs> um, I don't think any, I mean, I never look at anything as a flop really mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there's always someone who appreciates it, you yeah. know? Um, and I always have like, even if it seems low compared to other view counts, like I still think about it, like let's say 10,000 people saw something. I'm like, that's yeah. still a lot of people, you know yeah. what I mean? So I never consider it as a flop, but um, yeah, I don't, so I don't know. Last year, I tried an experiment at Christmas because I love poetry. I write poetry and I did an animated poem. And so I hired an animator and I did a poem and it's totally out of my niche. Like it's, I can understand why it wasn't recommended to that many people, but mm-hmm. I absolutely loved it. And I, I feel like it, I don't know how many views it got, like 25,000 views or something like that. But I would, I don't look at it negatively like, oh, it was a flop. I look at it more like, oh, I want more people to discover this type of thing. So I'm doing another one this year. Okay. You're like, oh, I'm going to try it again. You know? I'm doing it again. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Um, what has been your biggest opportunity you got as a result of being on YouTube? There's been a lot. Um, I did a TEDx talk, which was pretty amazing. Oh. And I think that that came through YouTube. I was like, is that because um, of your is- books or is that because of YouTube? I feel like it was because of the books, but then they saw I had a YouTube channel Mm. and thought maybe I'd be a good speaker. So that, that happened, which was great. And then, um, another thing I'm really proud of is that Victoria magazine is like my favorite magazine. Um, and I've been reading it since I was a child, but they chose me as one of their women entrepreneurs for 2021 in their January issue, which for me was like, Oh my gosh, the biggest honor. So I feel like both of those things um, are really good. Yeah, Yeah. That's amazing. What would you say has kept you going over the last 11 years as a YouTube creator? I would say connection with my audience. Like I love my audience and uh, we're very connected and people write, they tell me things, you know, and like, if you look in the comments of any of my videos, there's like, my dad always says this. He's like, Jennifer, people write you paragraphs. (laughs) Like I know they do. Mm. And I think it's just connecting with women really Mm -hmm. um, that has kept me going. I love that. I love talking to them and connecting with them. That's so cool. And I'm sure you get that even more so um, in your, your paid community as well. Yes. Yeah. We're very, we're very close there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. What is your superpower that has led to your success? That's a good question, too. And I would say, I don't, you know, that's actually a good question. I don't know. I don't know if I am relatable. People tell me I am. People tell me I'm not. Like, I I hear both. I think my superpower is that I help women uncover parts about themselves that have been hidden or that Mm -hmm. they would like to uncover. So I like to help women express their style, you know, when they've been wearing 
sweats or yoga pants for 10 years and they suddenly are like, what is my style? You know, I love doing that. Or I love just bringing them out of just the drudgery and mundaneness of everyday life, you know? So I think that that is my superpower. Yeah. I mean, your channel really is about embracing just beauty and everyday and, yeah, you know, and cooking and mm -hmm. flowers. And, and I think that's yeah. a lost art in a lot of ways. Um, mm -hmm. And I, every now and then I've, I've seen creators like yourself that really kind of embrace that lifestyle. And I do think that people are, are hungry for that in a way, mm -hmm. because it's not something I feel like that's really celebrated there's so much technology yeah. there's so much you know we are we're, we are on youtube but there's just so much of that fast pace yeah you know life that it's easy to forget about the simple things but i've That's seen true. some youtube creators like yourself really see a lot of success with really embracing that kind of life and and there's people out there i think that are very interested in kind of going back to that in a way i'm sure oh, yeah. you have your own thoughts on that being that this yeah is what you do Absolutely. Last question is, what is your number one piece of advice you would tell somebody who is just starting out on YouTube? Well, okay. So I would say if they're in it for the long haul, and I, this is probably goes against all advice that people say, because people always said to me, for me to go niche, mm -hmm. like only do 10 item wardrobe videos or only do. And I never did that because I knew that I'm in it for the long haul. And I get, I'm the type of personality that gets really bored with one subject. So I have more of an, a niche umbrella, like in the lifestyle category. Um, but I would say like, what do you love? You know, like choose something you love mm -hmm. and then work on that. Because if you're doing it because it's like trendy right now or, you know, like, let's say a, a certain diet's trendy and, and you're, you happen to be doing it. Like you start doing videos on it and you grow your channel with that. Like, you know, you might change your mind later. Or yeah. if you do a homeschooling channel, cause you just started homeschooling and you want to have a niche homeschooling channel is like, is that what you want to do for a long time? A long because time. like a long time, yeah. not just like yeah. the next six months, yeah. you know? So I, I would say just what do you absolutely love and then make content around that? Yeah, and I like what you said about the niche thing because I think the niche thing gets um, kind of like misunderstood in a way in that I think people will take it very literal and be like, no, I have to only create these types of videos. But right. there's different kind of niches in the sense that, and I think with yours, it's kind of more of a demographic niche in that you're creating mm -hmm. content for a very specific person. It could be a lot of different types of things you're talking about, but I think the person yeah. that is very connected to your content there's there's similar the similarities amongst that you could probably yeah. i'm sure you've done a lot of thinking on who these people are so yeah. I, I actually call it a demographic niche that you could talk about oh. many different topics as you want if it's focused on one specific type of person like even like i shared, love that yeah shared value yeah. or shared right yeah. so obviously everybody who's into your channel is very much into the beauty of kind of homemaking and everyday mm -hmm. life and that's a very specific person but there's so yes. many topics you can talk about for that right so i yeah i love it i think that's great oh yeah i um, like that too so jennifer this was amazing i love your channel like i said i think you have such beautiful content so thank you for taking the time to chat with me and come on the show for people that are not familiar with your channel where can they find you you can find me um, on YouTube at The Daily Connoisseur. Um, my author website is jenniferlscott.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you, Erica. It was such a joy to talk to you. You too. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that interview and you learned a lot from it. Now, if you have a YouTube channel or considering starting a YouTube channel that you're serious about growing and you want the best of the best when it comes to personalized feedback, advice, and up to the minute YouTube strategy, then consider my Zero to Influence YouTube Bootcamp for Women. I have been running this bootcamp since 2018 and we have hundreds upon hundreds of very successful students that have gone through the program. And I can go on and on about the YouTube bootcamp, but I wanted to hear it directly from some of the women themselves. I feel so lucky that I got to do Erica's boot camp. Before I joined the boot camp. Before I joined the boot camp. Before joining Erica's boot camp. My channel was all over the place. I didn't know what I was talking about. I would hear people say that I need to find my why and my voice and my audience and understand my target audience, but 
I never felt like I really understood what that meant. Erica helps me come up with YouTube video ideas. She helps me with consistency. She helps me to interpret my analytics. I started with 12,000 subscribers and now I have over 50,000 and it is growing rapidly. My channel has grown almost 100,000 subscribers. I definitely wouldn't have gotten to this place in such a short amount of time without Erica's bootcamp. What makes Erica special is that she has been talking to and analyzing YouTube channels for years and that has given her this bank of knowledge to pull from. I'm constantly asking her questions about YouTube. I'm asking her advice about my YouTube channel. Thinking the Zero to Influence YouTube Bootcamp was one of the best. The best, the best decision I could have ever, 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 ever made for myself, for my channel, for my own personal growth as a human being. I could not be happier. I love that it has reinvigorated me in such a beautiful way. So I am so, 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 so happy that I've joined. You're crazy not to hire her. Get on it. All right. <laughs>